Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Deck. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be walking you through on how to utilize Synology C2 backup service with the Hyper Backup application. So without further delay let's go ahead and get right to it. In a previous video, I covered the basics of Synology C2 backup service, as well as the pricing and some of my thoughts on Synology C2. Uh, for today's video, I will be using the Plan 1 at one terabyte. I do cover all the differences between Plan 1 and Plan 2 in that previous video. I do recommend watching that video to choose which plan is gonna be best for you. Uh, but once again, I will be using Plan 1 with the one terabyte allotment for today's video. There are some added feature, features that you might want with the Plan 2, but for the most part, Plan 1 will be more than sufficient for your backup uses. So to start, let's go ahead and click on the main menu, then click on the Hyper Backup Allocation. From here, we're going to hit click on the plus sign to create a new data backup task, and we're going to choose Synology C2 as the backup destination. It's going to pop up a window where you're going to have to sign in to the Synology C2 service. If you haven't already created an account with Synology C2, you will have to do that now. And you'll also have to choose which uh, backup tier that you're going to have for your uh, C2 account. I've already done all that, as you can see here, that I have 0% utilized because I haven't set up any backups, of course, yet. But I do have a terabyte of storage. So go ahead and agree after you've created your account and chose, chosen which uh, plan that you want to have set up with your Synology C2. You do get a full 30 day trial uh, with your C2 creation. So you do have a little bit of time to choose a different tier if you want before you actually get charged anything. So that is a cool uh, little benefit that Synology is giving us. So I'm gonna go ahead and name my backup task. And I'm just gonna call this daily offsite backup. And that's actually going to be the directory on Synology C2 server. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and name that and the task the same thing. I just generally do that just for ease of use uh, on, my, on my side. So anyways, at this point in time, you're not going to choose which shared folders that you're going to want to back up. So I have two folders that I want to back up to my offsite backup on Synology C2. So I'm going to choose those. And at this point in time, you can now actually choose certain applications you want to back up. A quick note, some applications will require the shared folders associated with them to be backed up. So let's expand this real quick. You can see here that on Synology Drive, it is requesting that Interstellar, PC backups, and recordings all be uh, backed up. So if you go ahead and decide you want to choose to back up Drive, it will automatically select these folders that, it, that are set up through Drive that are enabled as a team folder inside of the Drive application. So do be aware of that when you're trying to choose an account uh, and how much storage space you're gonna need. I don't care about backing up Synology Drive. I can set it up easily enough if I, my Synology completely crashes. Um, I mainly want offsite backup. In the case uh, my house burns down, I wanna at least have access to my data in the future. I'm not really too worried about the time required to reset up the Drive application as it's fairly minimal. So I have my two folders once again that I wanna back up. I'm not gonna back up any applications at this point in time. And now I can name my backup task. And I'm having trouble typing today. Uh, the backup task name is, is gonna be the name that is gonna be displayed over here on the left-hand side of your hyper backup application. And you can enable the task notification so it'll send you email if you have the SMS functionality set up. You can have it even send you an SMS when the backup has been completed. Uh, you can limit the bandwidth if you so choose to. I never do this, but if you have a, a more limited bandwidth at your house, you can limit the bandwidth that this analogy will have access to uh, so that it doesn't completely you know, spam your bandwidth and make everything else on your network slow down. I'm gonna enable the backup schedule. You can run this daily. Uh, in addition, you could run it weekend or weekdays. Uh, if you want to only run it to be one, one run one day of week, you can actually deselect days. Um, if you deselect all the days, it automatically selects them all for you. But if I only want this to run on Sundays, I can choose that. I can choose weekdays if you're like a business uh, weekend, for instance, or daily. Or for instance, you wanted to run, you know, only Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays for some weird reason. You can do that. I'm going to leave mine at daily still, and I'm going to have mine run at noon. 
simply because I'm at work uh, at noon, so it'll be running and backing up while I'm at work and not really utilizing my computer. I'm gonna go ahead and enable backup in, uh, integrity checks. This will require a little bit of bandwidth as it checks uh, the backup integrity to make sure that everything is fully backed up and all your files are still fully accessible. So I'm gonna leave that at Sunday uh, and I'm just gonna leave it at 5 a.m. simply because on Sundays at 5 a.m. I'm not really doing too much on uh, my computer at that point in time. You can enable client-side backup with all tier plans from Synology. So even the plan tier ones and the tier two plans are all compatible with the client-side encryption. If you do have client-side encryption, you want to input a password here. And if you ever lose that password and need to restore backup, data from your Synology C2 offsite backup, you will not be able to decrypt that data if you lose this password. So if you are using the offsite backup and do choose to use encryption, it is very, very important to make sure that you have this password recorded someplace safe, such as a password manager. All right, so after clicking next, it will ask if you wanna go ahead and start the backup now. If you do choose no, it'll just run at the next scheduled interval. And one thing I always do is click on the hammer menu here and then click on the edit button. Here you'll be able to run through all the settings that you just applied earlier, just to make sure that everything is being backed up that you wanna be even backed up and all the settings are 100% correct. You can see here in my shared folders that I want backed up are being backed up. I can skip the applications because I didn't have any. Uh, you can rename your backup task if you so want to. You can't name the destination folder on the remote server, but you can name the backup task name that is displayed over here on the left hand side if you chose choose to. If for example you find your Synology is starting to be a network hog, you can institute a bandwidth limitation or uh, remove that bandwidth limitation if you had it originally and got an internet upgrade. You can modify your schedule to a degree with the C2 backup on the plan one. You don't have a ton of control over uh, when your backups are ran, you only have essentially daily ones. You can't run it on an hourly basis or anything like that, but you can run it once a day and you could, for example, uncheck Sunday and Saturdays if you don't, uh, if it's for like a business use case and you never have any new data on Saturday, Sundays and Saturdays. If you do do that, which I'll get to here in a second with the rotation, um, but with the tier one plans, you do get 11 versions of your backup data. So if you do choose to deselect some, you can go farther back in time. Uh, so that is a benefit, especially if you're at work, doing this for a workplace environment and you don't work on the weekends, then it is smart to go ahead and uncheck Sunday and Saturday because with 11 versions, you can actually go back a full two weeks, slightly over two weeks, but you can go back a full two weeks rather than you know a week and a half. So you can also change the backup integrity, uh, how often that is, per when and how often that is performed. Uh, there are some options that I don't really know why Synology doesn't give you these options when you're first creating it, but you have the option to repeat yearly or monthly if you want to run the integrity check less often. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine at weekly. Uh, and the point I was talking about earlier with the rotation, with the tier one plans uh, over here, and I do cover all this in that, other, that previous video that I was mentioning earlier in much more depth, but in the tier one plans, you do get 11 versions of your backup data, but you can't, you don't have any control over those rotations at all. If you do choose one of the higher end plans, the plan two options uh, that start at one terabyte, you do have a lot more control over your backup schedule uh, and also the re rotation uh, settings that you don't have access to in the plan one options. So after clicking okay, it will ask if you wanna go ahead and start the backup task. I clicked okay and then very quickly realized it was gonna take a long time to upload all my data to the C2 data center. So I ended up pausing it because it was consuming all my upload bandwidth and ended up forgetting about it for a couple of days. So last night I finally remembered and resumed the, the backup task and it did end up taking about a full 18 hours to upload all my data to the uh, C2 data center. I did have about 316 gigabytes, so it was a pretty hefty chunk of data to upload all at once, and I definitely exceeded my Comcast data limit for a month, but alas, uh, I have all my data on the C2 data center, and all future backups will be much smaller because it's only gonna have to upload the data that has changed since the previous backup. 
All right, so that should pretty much cover everything there is into setting up a backup task for Synology C2. If I did miss anything or if you had any further questions, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below or possibly hit me up on my Discord channel. I do have a text channel dedicated just for Synology over there. So if you have any questions, don't. It, that's a great place because you can share screenshots and it makes uh, talking about any issues much easier. So if you liked this video or found it otherwise helpful, give it, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that, guys. Also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great content from Thought Provoking Tech. Until next time, Zach out.